But first, to a tale of serial harassment so extreme it's hard to comprehend. American journalist Paulette Cooper was once the Church of Scientology's public enemy number one. After publishing a book critical of the church in the 1970s, she was subjected to a vicious vindictive campaign that began with death threats. Then leaflets were sent to her neighbours claiming Paulette was a prostitute and a child molester. A Scientology spy even moved into her apartment. Things took an even more serious turn when she was framed for a bomb threat. Her remarkable story of harassment and survival has been told in a new book called The Unbreakable Miss Lovely, the codename Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard gave her. Steve Kinane caught up with Paulette Cooper in Toronto, Canada. As a young journalist working in New York in the late 60s and early 70s, Paulette Cooper stumbled into Scientology. I became interested after a friend of mine joined, told me he was Jesus Christ, and then I went to the person who got him in and I said, he thinks he's Christ now, what's going on? And this other guy said, well, maybe he really is. So I thought, you know, this would be something to investigate. And that's how I started. She filed a piece for Queen magazine in London and the harassment started soon after. I was in New York at the time and I picked up the phone and got the first of several death threats. And that's how I knew that the article had come out. And then I developed, I found so much information that I simply expanded it into what was the first book that I wrote. That book was The Scandal of Scientology, one of the first critical books on the subject. Paulette Cooper had no idea what she was getting herself into. They sued me 19 times all over the world, put me through 50 days of depositions. They sent a lot of horrible anonymous smear letters about me. For example, to all the neighbors in my building, they sent, that's three, it was 300 people, they sent a letter saying that I was a prostitute with venereal disease and had sexually molested a two-year-old baby girl. They found out that I had been in a period of slight depression and had seen a psychiatrist, so they robbed the psychiatrist and got my records and sent that to everybody that I knew. Scientology's founder L. Ron Hubbard ordered his followers to attack critics by any means possible. The fair game policy, written by Hubbard, decreed that enemies of Scientology may be deprived of property or injured by any means by any Scientologist without any discipline of the Scientologist, may be tricked, sued or lied to or destroyed. As part of this policy, the Church of Scientology attempted to get Paulette Cooper incarcerated by framing her for a bomb threat she had nothing to do with. The worst thing that they did was that they stole my stationery they got my fingerprint on a piece of paper and then they sent bomb threats to themselves and they had me arrested for a terrorist crime that I not only didn't commit but I didn't know what was going on and I was arrested and I was indicted and I was up for 15 years in jail and it was just the most horrible horrible time in my life the harassment took a terrible toll on Paulette Cooper. She started drinking too much, taking prescription drugs and came close to taking her own life. Her trial was postponed as more evidence came to light. When the FBI raided the Church of Scientology in 1977 for stealing swathes of government documents, the conspiracy to frame Paulette Cooper was uncovered. In the raid, the documents, they found something that said along the line of conspired to frame Miss Lovely, which was the code name that Hubbard gave to me, for a crime she didn't commit, she was arrested. And it took all that time for me to be exonerated with that over my head. In 1985, the Church of Scientology reached an out-of-court settlement with Paulette Cooper, the details of which are confidential. The whole saga lay dormant until Tony Ortega uncovered new information on the Church of Scientology's conspiracy to frame Paulette Cooper while researching his new book. It must have taken hundreds of employees uh, doing um, uh, breaking into places, stealing records, um, uh, tapping her phone, making friends with her with spies, 
uh, the this total you know scope of it is is really amazing and from 1969 to really 2010 at least so uh, I just I've thought about the millions of dollars they must have spent trying to destroy her over the years Tony Ortega writes daily about Scientology for his blog The Underground Bunker. He knows what it's like to be harassed for investigating the organisation and has immense respect for Paulette Cooper's resilience. Paulette survived the Holocaust as a child and I think she saw very early in her investigation of Scientology an organisation that sort of brought that back up for her, a totalitarian organisation that she felt the world needed to be you know, warned about. I think she took it personally too and decided that she wanted to see this organization suffer as much as she had suffered. The Church of Scientology has never publicly apologized for its campaign to destroy and incarcerate Paulette Cooper. But one ex-member has. Len Zimberg was in his early 20s when he spied on Paulette Cooper. He wasn't involved in framing her, but he did deliver her childhood diary to her adoptive father. Two years ago, he apologised to Paulette via email. As a Jew, the subject of the Holocaust is uh, sacred. The memory of six million people, among them Paulette's mother and father, um, and the knowledge that I participated in her persecution um, all came together. Uh, I have children, and the year before I sent Paulette the email, I'd taken them to Israel. We visited the Holocaust Museum called Yad Vashem there. And I realized that there was no way for me to continue avoiding what I'd done. Len Zimberg says he wished he apologized years ago. Today I, I met Paulette for the first time in person. And I realized that when I knew her, of her, back in the 70s, she was the worst person in the world. This sweet, lovely <laughs> woman. I, you know, I, I, I had so demonized her. Um, and I don't want to put the responsibility on other people. I did what I did. And yes, Scientology is a coercive thought cult. But in the end, we're responsible for what we do. Oh, I, I was very touched by it that he had done that. I was very pleased. The major people who did the, the really horrible things. Now, Len, as you know, that was horrible. He delivered the anonymous uh, letter to my father saying that I hated him. But the people that actually framed me and wrecked my life, none of them have come forward. No one from the Church of Scientology in the US was available for interview. When Lateline asked via email whether the organisation felt any regret or remorse about the operation to frame and incarcerate Paulette Cooper, no answer was forthcoming. In a statement it says, The Church settled all outstanding claims with Paulette Cooper exactly 30 years ago. It is a matter of public record that the current church management disbanded the rogue unit with which she was having trouble long before then. But the Church of Scientology still harasses its critics. Come on, Marty. Got anything to say? You can't even defend yourself on this, can you? What's your name? This is footage of the church's former second-in-command, Marty Rathbun, being harassed at his home as part of a Scientology operation. Scientology always argues that they've changed and they, they don't do these kind of things before. And part of the reason I wrote this book was I wanted to point out some of the similarities between what Paulette went through in 1972 and what Monique Rathbun and Marty Rathbun have been going through last year. 
You're interrupting the delivery of Scientology, which is... Uh, Marty, you don't deliver Scientology. It happened for years. years. Today, they hire professionals to do it, and the professionals are a little smarter about knowing where that illegality line is. But they're still ultimately accomplishing the same things. They're still psychologically terrorizing people with the use of surveillance, with the use of intimidation. They're just not... They're just a little more careful about how they do it.